you know, you're 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 a funny dude, you're a humble dude, uh, but you you definitely have a lot to say. I I would say for, from <laughs> fuck, maybe yeah. more than a lot. Uh, the thing is, it, mate, we talk bollocks because it's called bodybuilding and bollocks because we it's shit. It's the shittest podcast ever, but people seem to like it. So, here are the many ways you could use the word bollocks in <clears throat> in England. The bollocks that means brilliant or the best. Bollocks that means shit. Utter bollocks. That means lies. Bollocking. That's a strong reprimand. That's being told off. So if you get a bollocking, you're being told off, right? Stark bollock naked means nude. Ah, oh, bollocks to it. That just means ah, oh, fuck that. You know. So it's very, it's a very good word to use. Did it take it easy? Well, it was because it weighed nothing at the bottom. It did. It literally weighed nothing at the bottom. But that's pretty good. My left I mean, shoulder's not great. My left knee's a bit fucked. My right left hamstring is pretty fucked. Um, are you ever going to be able to train differently, you think? That's good. Hey, everybody. Manda Spalka here. Maximum Muscle Report. For those of you who haven't heard... We are now doing a full-blown invasion of the UK. We will be out there three times this year, in March, in August, and again in October. Ian Constable and I are working out the details to also be out there for the British Grand Prix to see none other than yours truly, Luke Sandow, who's the guest. Uh, Currently, we're due to be in in Pittsburgh. It, It unfortunately is the same weekend as the President's show, but we are working diligently to to get something figured out. Next year, we'll absolutely be out there uh, for that show. But, Luke, thanks for being on, man. Thank you, man. I really appreciate you uh, having me on. So, you know, you and I know each other now for, for the last couple of years. We've been, yeah, been yeah. seeing you competing, been backstage, done some interviews. Um, tell us a little bit about what's going out there in, in the U.K., you know, what the bodybuilding culture is like. And how excited are, are you and do you think the fans are going to be to, to, to have us, Maximum Muscle Report, as the new media spar- sponsors and partners <clears throat> to cover well, everything going on out there? I mean, the bodybuilding, well, you, mate, you are going to have your hands full because there is a lot of bodybuilding here. Um, it's, it's grown so much over the last four or five years. It's just gone from naught to a bazillion. Um, so, no, I've, I mean, it's, it's incredible. I, I know... Um, there's, I mean, there's a few reasons why. Um, I think obviously social media being one, and also because of social media, they, well, some of us have been fortunate enough to have been like, get contracts with some large companies who put have kind of put our content out for the wider audience. Yeah. Uh, and with Jordan Peters, trained by JP, his site, he does a ton of cool stuff. Yeah. So um, I think those kind of things, and the fact that the amount of talent coming out of the country, obviously, <laughs> that's probably the most important thing. <laughs> that, that as well. Challenge uh, number one. Yeah. I was- yeah, just the minor detail is there's some pretty good bodybuilders coming out of this country too. Yeah. So yeah. Well, you, you know, you really are the spearhead of that, Luke. You know, you're 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 a funny dude, you're a humble dude, uh, but you you definitely have a lot to say. I <laughs> I would say for, from <laughs> fuck, maybe yeah. more than a lot. Uh, I, I would say it really starts with with you on the front lines. Jordan Peters is doing a ton. For, for bodybuilding over there. Mm-hmm. He's maybe a little more on the back end, helping prepare the athletes. Yeah, well, Jordan's more this. kind of education. Jordan's more educational, which is probably why the good information he's putting out, that's why a lot of the amateurs are getting better because we've actually got yeah. decent information. Right. Not waste, well, that's no excuse because the actual website's international, so I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> but, <laughs> you, do, you, you always have to have a guy on the back end that's really getting... Yeah engine moving and, yeah. and it seems to be him uh I, I think it's a three-headed monster he's on the back end doing that mm-hmm. uh bob chicarello who partnered with ian constable and now mm-hmm. they are doing a fantastic job of putting out shows for for everybody across the uk and are doing a yeah. fantastic job hitting the media to to even integrate us and to let everyone around the world know what's going on and then you on the forefront my man i mean y- you just hit the circuit Boots on the ground, and that was it. You were yeah. introduced into the yeah, world. I, th- and, and I think that's, but, well, I got quite a lucky start because my pro debut was the Arnold. 
Um, it, it really shouldn't have been, but it was. Um, and I, that I don't. I think Cody Montgomery's done that, but I don't think anyone else has got the invite on their first try, as far yeah. as I know. Like recently. Um, so that was huge, especially from the UK. And at the time, there was nothing coming from the UK. Um, so that I think that propelled me quite. Uh, so I'm very lucky to have had that. And I, and I think because of that, I just tried to make sure I capitalized on that as much as I could. Because like, that's a that's a big because I, I fucked it real bad on stage, but I kind of caught it and did pretty well with it off stage. And now here I am <laughs> on a podcast. <laughs> Well, yeah, let, let's talk about the podcast a little bit. You, yeah. you, you started this, you said, but it ain't that long ago, a couple of months ago. Yeah, so Fuad and I do, yeah, Fuad Abiyad. He's um Canadian pro. He's a bit of shit now, though. He's a bit of a has-been. <laughs> <He's>, uh, <clears throat> him and I do a show every week. Um, it's called Bodybuilding and Bollocks, and that's another thing that's just taken off like mad. Um, I, I don't even know how it's gotten as popular as it has. Um, I get... Multi, like tens of te- messages every day saying just or, or repost or story tags because of that podcast and it's just all right so so for <laughs> those that don't know i happen to know but what does bollocks mean bollocks is <coughs> yeah <clears throat> okay i've got a little meme here for these for this very reason because a lot of people don't know what bollocks means and i sent this to fuad because i don't even think he's certain either um it's basically like bullshit but but it's the British version. So here are the many ways you could use the word bollocks in <clears throat> in England. The bollocks. That means brilliant or the best. Bollocks. That means shit. Utter bollocks. That means lies. Bollocking. That's a strong reprimand. That's being told off. So if you get a bollocking, you're being told off, right? Stark bollock naked. Means nude. Ah, bollocks to it. That just means, ah, fuck that. You know, so it's very, it's a very good word to use, and and that's what. So half of our podcast, or maybe when I say half, I mean ninety percent of it. Is <laughs> I like your math. Bollocks. Yeah, I'm not a maths man, not good at numbers, but yeah, that's it. Ninety percent of it's shit, but people like it. So I'm not. So it's, it takes zero effort to do it because we just talk bollocks. So I, I, I worked, uh, my mom is an educator and, okay. and at Catholic schools when, when I was a kid, so we didn't make much money. So on the weekend, she worked at an Irish and English uh, establishment here in Chicago. Was, you guys were literally coming off the boat and that was the place that you, so I would hear you fucking bollocks every day, <laughs> 35 times a day in 17 different contexts. So by ten years old, I knew I knew exactly what they were saying. It's a, it, it's a, I think, like British English and Australian English, I think we swear more than anyone else. Oh, God, absolutely! And but it's I, not, and it, it's it's quite inoffensive. It, we, right. it doesn't because right. it doesn't sound. But especially when an Australian can say whatever they want, and it always sounds nice. So I'd imagine when British people do it to like American people, they're like, "Wow, well, like that sounds right." But if you, but when you guys swear as much as us, it's like you're frowned upon it's really weird of course of course you know i think, gordon, I think try to I think be politically gordon correct and proper no i, I think gordon ramsay's out with that because he swears a lot and he's really really british he's actually scottish but he doesn't sound it it's, does he does he wear a skirt oh it's a it's a kilt not a skirt sorry it's a kilt. Yeah. i've worn a kilt i've worn a kilt i i wouldn't put it past you I don't know if I've got any Scottish in my family. I do on I do on the step side. I don't know if I do on the biological side. So I have to find out. So otherwise, is this kind of, is this kind of like what your podcast is like? You know, I, yeah, I, I, don't, just see, I don't know. See. If we've talked about bodybuilding. We, yeah, we've been on no one, I don't even, This is a bodybuilding podcast, but no one cares. It's boring. Oh, wait, we should. We actually should genuinely talk about yeah, it. Well, maybe a little bit. A little, no, bit. a little bit. Right. I'll let you ask the question. Okay. So uh, let, let's. Let's start with this past year at the Arnold. Um, everybody, you were you were the talk. You know, uh, everybody saw you, and then from there, I would say the next show that really got everybody in a, in a tiz was that Tampa Pro. Yeah, and it was you and <laughs> Dexter, which we all know. I mean. Dexter is one of the three, four, five greatest bodybuilders of all time. What he's doing will never be done again. 
And Luke, you know, we, we've got the famous video that, of course, Maximum Muscle Report did. And it's the two. They brought the two of you yeah, out yeah. side by side, pose for pose for pose. That had to be a thrill for you. Walk us through what it was like to to have such a, a big showing on the Arnold stage, but then turn around and be able to do something even bigger in August at one of the biggest shows in, in the world of Tampa Pro. Well, so so going to the first point about like what was it like? I don't know. I, it's it doesn't. I can't even think. I don't know. It's, I don't think it'll ever sink in. I, it doesn't sink in that I'm, I've even won my pro card, let alone achieve those two things. Come on, man. I mean, you're, you're as big as a house. Like, when, when I look back on it, I'm just like, yeah, fuck yeah. And it just makes me think, I know for a million, a million percent that I can be better than that. Right. Much better than both. Because neither of them were 100%. Yeah. And I've, and I, and so, and because <clears throat> there was, there was, some slight tweaks I would have made to each look. Um, but it's, I know I can be better. And that to me is motivating. So if I did that well, not a hundred percent, what can I do a hundred percent? So what, what's the strategy has been like since, because so there was a lot of talk, those two shows, what I think a lot of people don't understand or, or they, they fail to think about is that makes for a really long year. And then you went into the Olympia, that, and the Olympia wasn't your best showing. No. Again, those of us but, who know, we go, wait a minute. This guy ran all fucking year. That's insane. Well, the that, body well, can't endure that, but you still made it through. It shows, yeah, so it shows me that I can do two shows spaced out, because I did it last year. Yeah. Um, so if all goes planned to this year, it will be the same, but I will actually have an, a longer gap in the middle. Mm. So, um... So in theory, it should be even better. Because well, I, I mean, I know I, I definitely can peak twice a year, um, and I, I believe I can peak better the second time from what I learned from the first time. Yeah, yeah. So, it, so is it, that it, that's the strategy then going into this year? Is yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you've kind of got an idea. You just need to tweak a few things. Yeah, I just I just need time and to, for my body not to be fucked. It's that simple. And it's yeah. like, so the Arnold was just like clockwork. Like everything worked. I was just like firing and all. I was eating like cookies before training every day. And they never came out of the diet. And I got a lot of shit for that going into the show. And I was peeled. This, this, I mean, and then for the rest of the year, I didn't have them. Um, and, and, the, and it's like every time it's different. But that just goes through it. That Arnold, at that point, my body was just in a really good place. Yeah. And everything we did at the peak, I just looked better. Yeah. I didn't go, oh, I'm a bit flatter than I was earlier. I was just getting better, better, better. Now, Luke, did you did you change camps or everything's still the same? No, no, no. <clears throat> still with Chris Aceto. Okay. Um, well, yeah. Yeah. Again, a lot of it's travel. Learn. Um, travel definitely has an impact. Um, for that, and obviously doing more shows over a run, it doesn't. I can't. I haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. Um, but one of the cool things about the first show I'm doing this year, and I haven't got to this, is in the UK. Um. And it's 35 minutes from my house. Uh, I've uh, never competed this close to where I live ever. I, I, I have to say, I, I would say, we, we just talked, I just asked you about your camp. You know, I'm a big believer in one thing that, I, that I've seen across the board in all <laughs> divisions. You know, it doesn't matter if you're just a bodybuilder, men's physique figure. It doesn't matter what division. Consistency and continuity, I think, are at the top of that list. So once you have your camp and you're together and you're learning the processes and all the other things, you, you just mentioned some of them, the travel, the durations in between time. There's so many things to figure out and iron out themselves. But then to have the consistency and continuity of the same camp and the same people and the same voices and the approaches that you trust and believe in really makes such a, a massive difference. Yeah. But then you being able to compete at home 35 minutes away, but also I, I, I've got to think that there has got to be something else that's going on in your guy's head to want to be the British Grand Prix champion now that that show is back. I can't imagine you and Nathan, and that's going to be a dogfight of dogfights. Well, I believe that Nathan's not doing the show. Oh, really? That's from, <clears throat> so as it stands, as we record this right now, he's not. He's told me and he's made it public because he's mentioned it in the comments on his Instagram that he has no intention of doing this show. Okay. Um, but, you scared him off. 
but yeah. <laughs> um, but the, it's a big motivation for me, this, because I've got to redeem myself from the Arnold. No, sorry, not from the Arnold, from the Olympia. The Olympia yeah. Them, yeah. And, and I'll be doing that in front of my hometown, in front of my family right. and friends. So I, I'm not, my children are going to be there. I'm not, I want them to see me win. What, uh, you know what, Ian, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on record and say now, I don't know what we need to figure out, but I will get something figured out that Maxwell Muscle Report will be there, Luke. We got we to gotta, we gotta film oh, all yeah. this interview. Hey, yeah, yeah. We've got to be there it's for It's going to be huge. Yeah. And it's, um, I haven't competed in the UK since I won my pro card. Yeah. So um, it's, uh, it's a totally different environment this year. It's all different. Um, yeah. I mean, I've had, I've had a bit of a, a few obstacles in the prep so far. Like with the, I had a mild pector and I got, got the flu for a week, which I think everyone's had. Um, but yeah, that um, that hasn't slowed me down either. So I'm now 10 weeks out as of yesterday and I fly out to Florida in two days. I'll be there for there, then go out to the Arnold. Then when I get home, it's eight weeks. So I get to spend those final eight weeks at home. In your grind, in your routine, in yeah. your rhythm. Yeah. Of and, and, and because I'm, cause I'm flying out with Redcon 1, they're so good with helping me and making sure I do not miss, skip a beat. They, it's like everything's everything's on me, my time, which is really cool of them. Well, going... I mean, that, that's, that's one of the, again, advantages. Of Aaron Singerman, yes, is a great business guy. We know that. I mean, Redcon yes, has, just, has just exploded all over the place. But it's not even just about that. He loves the sport of bodybuilding, and he was in the trenches for decades. People yeah, yeah. don't even – most people don't even know. He used to do interviews. He used to do show coverage. He used to do all of that. Yeah, yeah. Years. Oh, he, he loves bodybuilding. Oh, absolutely. Uh, he, he really does love it. Um, and, yeah, he's, he, it's great. I'm flying out with my, uh, my training partner and close friend, James Hollingshead. Yeah. Um, he, came, he came third in the British Grand Prix last year. Arguably should have been second. Uh, he's uh, – He's right with me as well. And I think he's 13, 14 weeks out from a show as well. So we're going to be in it together. We're both going to be, so that's going to be really cool traveling with somebody in the same boat as me as well. Yeah. So um, let, let's, let's touch base a little bit about your guys training style, because you know, does this really come from the origin of your guys, greatest bodybuilder Dorian, or, or is this just something that you guys feel that you needed to adopt? Cause for a lot of years now that, that heavy, hardcore, progressively increasing weight, that yeah. style had gone away for a while. There very yeah. few people were doing that. Now it's you, at Holland's Head, Ian Villar out in Canada. You guys are now the front runners again that are really yeah. spearheading that type of training. And we're seeing it in your physique. Well, it's funny you say that. We're actually starting to back off away from that now. We're actually going towards the more traditional bodybuilding style mm -hmm. of training because we both have enough muscle overall it's right. not about, it's not about mass anymore yeah there's other things that need changing if we like when it comes to bringing up a certain body part we need to be more precise putting more weight on the bar is not going to do it if it hasn't done it already it's not going to do it now so we need to like change our approach and I, it's funny because i feel like james and i almost do the whatever's in fashion we do the opposite yeah. not purpose right. so when volume was really popular i was doing dc training push ball legs. I was doing all that shit that's popular now four or five years ago. And now it's becoming really, really popular again. I'm going to be sort of switching to volume. <laughs> now. If, if you're talking, if you're, if you're running a seminar and you got a bunch of young athletes, again, doesn't matter what division, right? Well, with the exception of maybe bikini or wellness, right? But any young athletes, do you suggest that type of training early on in a career just to add some overall density and mass all over the physique? Yeah, I, I always believe your aim should be getting to be getting stronger. Uh, but people people misunderstand what that means. They think that means more weight on the bar, that means more reps. And it does to a certain extent, but getting stronger could just mean your form gets better. Because if your form is better and your execution is better, you, you're using more muscle. Technically, that muscle should be stronger. Right. Um, but it's not just that. It's it, it, are going it, over you, and over and over. You ha yeah, and you have to you have to nail your form and your and your execution. It has to be perfect, and then you get stronger. Yeah. So I think every beginner should spend some time learning how to lift properly, then get very strong from there. But use but don't try and get strong at lifting weights. Try and make your muscles stronger. So think of that as using tools. All your all these things you do in the gym are tools to make your say your pecs stronger. So you're not trying to get a stronger bench press. 
you're trying to use every exercise you can to make your chest stronger. Does that make sense? So you're not trying to get good at movements. You're, you're talking to... about the difference between bodybuilding and powerlifting. In a way, way. In, a, in a way, yeah, in a way. But yeah. it's, um, I think that's where people get misconstrued. It's like if you're, get, if you're getting really strong at one lift and everything else isn't progressing, it's, you're probably not getting any more muscle. You're probably just getting more efficient at that lift. Yeah. So you need to be kind of making progress everywhere, really. So Luke, you're 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 looking at one and done. You're looking at winning the Grizz Grand Prix and then head to my, that's, Yeah, that's the goal. Certainly, yeah. yeah. That'd be so nice. Just win it and go. Fuck me. Just chill yeah. now. Yeah, uh, relax. Go back home to my act, my own bed. Yeah. Luke, it's been a pleasure having you on, man. I, we could sit here and talk for hours, but, you know, yeah, people don't want to listen to me talk for hours. <laughs> Let's go to your podcast and listen. Exactly. To exactly. All the shit's on there. Yeah. Where where can they go so everyone can start li- – everyone else can start listening to this thing? Uh, well, if you've got my Instagram, there's loads of stuff on there. I post about it all the time. Uh, or Fuad's Instagram. Uh, or you can go to Fuad Abiyad's uh, Facebook page uh, – sorry, YouTube channel because that's where we actually posted it. It's also on Stitcher, SoundCloud, and iTunes. And it's called – bodybuilding and bollocks i'm pretty sure if you just typed my name in or for lad's name in into the search it would come up with it there you have it well we're, we're excited to be coming out there and, and finally yeah. being a part of the uk ian has done a great job bob and ian and and mm-hmm. ian yeah. said man man just we want you guys out here we want you doing yeah. uh, as much coverage as you can so here yeah, we come absolutely. yeah man that'd be good to see you when are you gonna be at the arnold absolutely of course. Well, I'll catch up with you in a couple of weeks, man. Yeah, we'll see you soon. Uh, see you soon. We'll, we'll have to do some, some, we'll capture some footage of you uh, at the Powerhouse Gym a few days before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'll be with James. I'll be, yeah, I'll be with James. That'd be good. There you go. Luke, always a pleasure, my man. Best of luck you, for this year. And uh, we will see you in a few weeks. And we look forward yes. to being out in the UK. Yeah. Show us around. Yeah, man. I'll see you soon. All right. Until next time, guys. Luke Sandow, Amanda Spalka, Maxim Muscle Report invading the uk 2020 we're out